Welcome to Nonprofit Spotlight, a program sponsored by the volunteers here at Community Television. Today's program is about the Capitol Branch Library and the Friends of the Library's campaign to help with funding the new library construction. Today's guests are Gail Ortiz, who is the co-chair of the Capitola Library Capital Campaign, Jamie Goldseed, who is the Capitola City Manager, Tony Campbell, Chair of the Friends of the Capitola Library and co-chair of the Capitola Library Capital Campaign, Mike Termini, Mayor of Capitola, and Susan Nimitz, the Santa Cruz Library Director. Thank you for joining me today. I'd like to start with a little bit of the history of the Capitola Library. Jamie, could you tell us about that, please? Sure, Keith. Thanks for having us on. So Capitola has a rich tradition of library services uh, dating back, I think, to the inception of the city. Um, and then into the 80s, where library was located in a little building across the street from where City Hall is today. Um, in the early 80s, the city of Capitola decided to participate with other local cities in the county to provide library services on a regional basis, to provide a larger library services um, offering to the, our entire community. So in the early 80s, we joined what's called a Joint Powers Authority in partnership with the city of Santa Cruz, the city of Scotts Valley, uh, and the county of Santa Cruz to provide regional library services. Now, money for that comes from a variety of sources, including a little bit of property tax that residents in the city of Capitola, Scotts Valley, and the unincorporated county pay, as well as contributions from the other government entities, as well as a dedicated sales tax that goes in to fund library services to provide the books, the services, and take care of all the buildings that we all know and love. So that's great. Now let's, let's talk about that building. We're looking at building a brand new one in Capitola. Susan, would you talk about new libraries? Well, I would just say that libraries have undergone a fundamental shift over the last 30 years. I think around 1990, 95, as the internet progressed into our lives, people assumed that libraries would go away. Um, if you look at the numbers, though, uh, probably the first 15 years of internet access uh, made library use explode because people began to aware of, be aware of all these wonderful resources that they didn't have access to before. So clearly the impact of digital content has had a profound effect on libraries. And as you enter a library building these days, you see a lot of uh, digital resources and public computers, you know, from grade or from, from small children to adults. And what's interesting about technology is it can be as big of a barrier as it is an opportunity. And so libraries are working really closely with their communities to make sure that people have access to both the hardware, software, the internet, but also that they develop the skills they need so that they can get the information that they want and desire. I think the other thing you see different in the newer libraries is that they tend to be really active spaces. Um, you know, the 1950s model of reading quietly to yourself to learn has really changed. And if you look at public schools, a lot of, uh, and, and our workplace, a lot of the things that people do are in, in collaboration with other people. Mm -hmm. And so you see that reflected um, in um, spaces in the children's area where parents are reading to their child, um, where there are activities going on, like a robotics club. Um, where uh, there are small meeting rooms so people from the community can come in and work together on projects. And often it's those smaller rooms that are the quiet spaces where the, the larger volume space is, is the active space. And then there's just been all these sort of aesthetic improvements in libraries like the introduction of natural light, which has been marvelous and, um, and um, uh, just fun and interesting furniture and amenities like fireplaces. And I think Gail can get into specifically more some of the things we think we can achieve in Capitola. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, the, the building that's there now has been there 17 years. And it's just a couple of portables that were stuck together. And that's definitely not the kind of library we're looking for in the future. So, Gail, why don't you talk about what we're hoping for in Capitola? All right, well, let's go on a tour of Capitola that's Library. Great. Uh, we'll start from where, where we are today. Um, and uh, our ser the services that Susan mentioned, uh, the services in the, the library, I wonder if we can go to the uh, slide. There we go. The services uh, are I think Susan's covered those. Where um, I was quite surprised to find the number of and types of people who use libraries and for what reasons. And so they certainly are still alive and well. And and this library is going to be 
uh, approximately three times larger than it is today. Today it's around 4,000 square feet. The new library will be 11,700 square feet. So let's take a look at the library that we are coming from. Um, and it's, as we said, it's quaint. That's a good <laughs> word for it. It's, uh, it's like small, that. it's quaint, <laughs> and it's served its purpose very well. But it's, we're finished now with that library, and we were lucky enough to get the award-winning architectural firm Nolan Tam from Berkeley to design this amazing library for us. And so we'll take a look at the corner of Wharf and Claire's. Uh, and this is the, the nighttime shot of uh, what our library is going to look like, not unlike the bow of a ship. Uh, and we're very proud and really excited about getting this project started for this reason. We'll go inside to the library, and here's the front door. The front door is pretty much where our front door is today. Uh, you'll see on the left the front door, and on the right uh, in the center is the community room, and over to the right is the, our children's wing that looks out onto the existing tot lot, which we're keeping. So for those of you who love the tot lot, it's, it will always be there. We'll go inside the, the library, and now we're looking back into uh, right at the front door and into the community room. One of the things that our, uh, our workshops told us was that people want space to have gatherings. And so there are many ways to have gatherings in this new library, the community room being the largest. It will seat about 138 people. It has a kitchenette, uh, nine, nine large screens, I believe. Correct. Huge uh, multimedia screens. Um, plenty of storage. And then we go into the children's wing, which is going to be looking out onto the tot lot and feeling like you're bringing the outside in just a little bit. And so the kids will feel like they're in an indoor outdoor kind of a, a spot. And then the children's wing looks back into the community room, the, the door of which is glass and can be opened or closed. So these all these rooms are very flexible. They can be used for all kinds of different things, both evening and daytime use, which is one of the nice things. Flexibility in libraries today is what's very important. One of the other things our community really wanted was a fireplace. And so we, we were able to, to find room uh, to have a, a cozy little fireplace uh, that I know is going to be, those chairs are going to be full all the time. Behind that fireplace is one of our main wonderful, we call it the boardroom, and it's a small meeting area that will also look onto the back of the fireplace. So that'll have, I'm, I know that'll be one of the very popular rooms. The, the next thing that we found was that people, kids really use libraries, teens, children, kids of all ages. And so from our visits to other libraries, we noticed that their teen rooms were packed all the time. We knew we needed one. This library is halfway between New Brighton Middle School and SoCal High and easily accessed over the bridge in back of Knob Hill. So kids are going to be in that room all the time. And the nice thing is it's glassed off so we can see them, but we can't hear them. <laughs> they'll have their own screen, they'll have their own mini library, they'll have chalkboards, spaces to sit, comfortable places to sit, that kind of thing. So then we go to the outside of the back of the library and we're looking from Clare Street uh, onto the children's wing and the bow of our ship and then our community porch which is going to be a huge, one of the things that we're raising money for is furniture for the for that porch and so people will be out there a lot. One of the things that happens in libraries today is that there aren't really uh, a lot of actual banks of computers. Computers are now, laptops are checked out and you can go anywhere in the library you want. So I can envision that people will be out on that porch reading books, accessing whatever data they need to in, in a, on a wonderful sunny afternoon. It'll be great. That's great. So, so we'll also have a laptop lab that we can set up the community program room to do um, technology programs. And so again, it's, it's not having a separate lab that's permanently a tech lab. It's creating a flexible space and providing the materials and equipment where we can do lots of different things with it. That's great. Right. So we've been raising money for this new library. Uh, we wanted to fund the kinds of things that 
uh, the city might not be able to fund and make sure that the, the community got what they wanted. Things like really good furniture, comfortable furniture, interesting lighting, um, uh, better, better equipment for children, uh, the fireplace area, those kinds of things. And we've been conducting a quiet campaign for the last uh, six months. We've been meeting for a year and a half, but we opened the quiet campaign. We've done so well. We've gone through our tier one expectations. We're now into our tier two expectations, and we have every reason to believe that we will actually be able to start an endowment for this library for ongoing programming that is not funded by the general library's yearly funding. That's so I, I think Tony Campbell is uh, most equipped to talk about our public phase of our campaign. Oh, I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> we have been uh, working on the public campaign, the elements of it, for a couple months now. It'll launch the end of uh, June when, uh, when the library is begun, the new library is begun. We're planning a variety of things. Um, there will be a paver program. So there are designated areas out in front of the library where families and businesses and grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles and anybody can, um, can uh, make a donation and, and get a paver. We will have um, meetings uh, in the community, neighbor to neighbor kinds of meetings where um, we'll ask someone, well, Mike, yes. we'll ask you, <laughs> among other people. But we'll ask people in, in uh, various people in neighborhoods if they wouldn't invite their, um, their neighbors in to hear about the campaign, to understand um, what the new library will look like. Still, a lot of people don't know that. So we'll, um, what other things will we do? We will, we will be tabling in the community. So you will see us on Wednesday evenings when the uh, Wednesday night concerts start, because that's when um, lots of Capitola people um, go down to the beach, as well as people from Soquel and other parts of the community. So we'd like to um, include lots of people in knowing what's going to be in the library. Um, we. <laughs> We have, we have an unusual thing that we're doing. Uh, the Friends of the Library were recently given um, by the Capitola Mall a bookstore or a storefront, which uh, Karen Scott and I and a few others have turned into a used bookstore. It's, it's, it's a great space. We're open for sure every first Saturday morning and um, at other times uh, when we can get enough volunteers together. But we are. That store is right next to, um, this sounds like an ad, it is. <laughs> um, it's right next to the Starbucks at the main uh -huh. entrance. And, and what we've noticed in the six or eight times that we have been open is that lots of people come in there. We have, Mike has printed out for us, a great big copy of the image that Gail showed you of the, of the, the library from the corner of Claire's and Wharf. And we point to that and we say, you know, these books that you're buying for a dollar or two dollars, they're going to help fund that. Um, we've had a little bit of difficulty with people thinking we are the library. <laughs> um, but, you know, we disabuse them of that. The, the point I'd like to make is when we launch the public campaign the end of June of this year, we want to, to engage lots of people in the community with understanding that this library is a once-in-a-lifetime option. It's, you know, I don't know when the last time Capitola built a significant building was, but it's... Never. Well, we re remodeled the old garages into the city hall. There you go. That was our biggest thing. There you go. Wow. So we these... built the bandstand. <laughs> that was it. That's good. Right. All right, that's, that's good. good. And then now we're upgrading. Yes, we are. Uh, it, it, the library is a special place, and I think... Um, based on the response to Measure S and the, the wonderful response, not just in Capitola, but throughout the county, mm -hmm. people value libraries, and this is going to be a gorgeous one. Yes. I think what Tony really emphasizes is really true. It's like th this is a generational project for Capitola. I mean, the opportunity to build such an amazing facility, and then the partnerships, which Tony has talked about, it, it's extraordinary between the voters' approval of Measure S the city able to set aside some redevelopment agency funds, the city council appropriating um, 
general funds as well as the partnership with the capital campaign have all kind of come together to let us do something which which the city hasn't been able to do in a very long time. So 17 years after the portables were rolled onto the site, uh, we're hoping to see them roll off this spring and commence construction on this exciting state-of-the-art facility. You know, I was chair of the library, Joint Powers Library Board, when that library was built, and mm -hmm. I thought, oh, we'll have it five or six years. 17 right. is way too long. Yeah. yeah. And we went from you to Gail, who was the chair for a while, yep. then myself. Yeah. Oh, no, Barbara Gorson. Barbara Gorson in between. Yep. And then, and Sam for a short time. Yep. And now there is no JPA as we knew it. It's a different model and it's working just fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's the schedule for the library to come now? When, when, when is it closing? And when is it going to be gone? When's it going to, a new one going to happen? And when are you going to finish building it, Jamie? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of pressure. Um, so we're on schedule right now. We actually plan to take uh, the plans to the city council later this month for approval to go out to bid. We'll be getting bids from public contractors uh, to start construction. Our target is to start construction in July and hopefully have a groundbreaking ceremony in June right as we're kicking that off. The new, our current library is scheduled to close, is it? The end of April. April? End of April. Oh my. April 28th is the last day you'll April. be open. The last day the Capitola branch will be open. And we're hoping to see dirt moving by the end of June, maybe yes. early July of this summer, which will be very exciting. Now, right now, the folks tell me that the, con the construction schedule will take 18 months, which is longer than I think anyone would really love to see, uh, but based on similar experience with other sorts of public facilities, it's apparently a reasonable e estimate. That also gives time to Susan and her staff to come in and stock the facility and make it ready so that on day one when the door is open, it's ready to go. So we're looking at fall 2019. Um, we're beside ourselves with excitement. I think um, the community is going to be so incredibly amazed and pleased. Um, as much as we are tired of the pods, the current Capitola Library is wildly successful beyond its square feet. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a regional draw, and people mm -hmm. across Santa Cruz County come yes. to it. Mm -hmm. And um, we have every expectation that the moment this opens, it will um, attract people from far and wide. In the meantime, we're going to try and provide some services out in the community, like story times. And um, we're adding hours at the Aptos branch and the Live Oak branch so that we maintain our patron um, base and hope they stick with us through this kind of difficult time. Hasn't um, the Capitol Mall also offered you space for um, programming? Yes, we are going to be doing some that's great. Children's um, Museum. Uh, space through that Children's Museum. So, and we um, have a book drop at, at Jade, Jade Street, Street Park. And we'll have a book drop at Jade Street Park. Um, uh, we have a one-pager for our patrons that you should just look at uh, for how to manage your accounts and uh, make sure that if you're reserving things, they go to the right place where you want them. It's online. It's available on site. Um, and I know that a lot of people truly love the staff. We're keeping them. They'll be out at Aptos and Live Oak, so you can stop by and say hello. Um, again, I have been blessed in that in my career, I've had the opportunity to rebuild libraries for communities. And opening day is one of the most extraordinary moments as you see young and old um, dreams come true in this amazing physical facility and I think people will be amazed at the use that we're going to get out of this mm -hmm. and the kind of new and different programs that we're going to be able to offer this community things that this community deserves. Mm -hmm. um, the children's program at the current site is so popular and we really have a corner of the pod <laughs> so that when we do children's programming it overtakes the entire building and just to be able to have a, a real um, section of the library be devoted to children's services is going to make an amazing difference to children and adults. And so I'm so very thrilled. We'll also be expanding the print and digital collections. I know people are worried about that. I think um, there will be something for everyone in our community. I think, it, I think it, a really important aspect of this new library is the teen room that Gail talked about. There is no place for teens in the library now. I mean, a few of them go there, but it's not a vibrant place. And I, I just, I, what I see in this new plan is, well, certainly the teen room, but the people coming there and having an entirely different experience than we have in the six 
movable buildings that we've, that we've currently got. I just, I, it's an exciting opportunity. I also think we have a gap in services in our communities. Uh, we have a lot of uh, couples with two working parents. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, so we definitely have this age group where they're no longer in a formal childcare after school, mm -hmm. but they're not ready necessarily to drive or do the teenage things, par particularly the middle schoolers. And I know we redid the Scotts Valley Library and it's just been this tremendous draw for that population after school and their parents. Um, and it, we're a good and safe place for these kids to be. We've been able to do things like offer technology and homework assistance and other resources that I really can, I believe can make a real difference in the community keeping kids safe and doing the kinds of things we want them to be doing in our community. And doing the things they want to do. Yeah. It, we don't need to bus teenagers to our library. Believe no. me, they will come. Mm -hmm. Scotts Valley is proof of that. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a great location, and I was really pleased to see at Capitol was able to keep the location. And having the tot lot, like you mentioned, the children's programs, I know plenty of people who say, oh, I go to the Capitol Library preferentially because there's a play space outside. Right. And we've incorporated the children's wing so it feeds right into the tot yes. lot, so it's really all one space. It is. It's really great. The city went through a really deliberative process, too, about looking at different opportunities for different spaces and whether or not, you know, with a project like this, is it located in the best place possible for the community? And um, we hosted community meetings. We did community <laughs> surveys. We did polling. We did polling. We did a lot of different things. And at the end of the day, really, the resounding answer was it's located where it should be. And that was the place to, that was the place to build the new library. A really wise woman said that the library is not the center of the community, the community is the center of the library. And I think one of the things that really pleases me about Capitola is you can see the community involvement. This is not a group of librarians coming from the outside <laughs> saying this is what you need. This is the community having been heavily invested for a number of years in um, getting the resources for this, but also now in designing it. There is another step. Um, as we open what what this is is the community learning center and we want the community to bring learning to the space and so you know if you want to sponsor a book club um, we have volunteers that teach robotics to teens so one of the challenges i have out there for the community is if there's something that you've always wanted to teach your community we're going to have some interesting spaces and we'd love to partner with our community in terms of of uh, the learning offerings that we have at the capitola library and you know, this has been uh, an elected official's dream because it's one of those things that we can present, we can offer to the community, we can have meetings, and as a group, the community has come together and said, yes, well done. And just moving forward, evidenced by the success of the fundraising so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just don't get very many no's. Almost everyone says, absolutely, right. sign me up. How much do you want? Everyone's excited, and even the very well composed and you know, lovely people who are the staff of the library are wildly excited. I've never <laughs> yeah. seen them. Yes. yes. Toe tapping. They're, they're actually speaking in loud voices. It's just tr thrilling. <laughs> <laughs> and the capital campaign has allowed us to be able to offer those 21st century amenities you've talked about, from the fireplace to the teen room, all those things. To ad additional materials, that's in tier two as well, additional materials. Um, so we'll have an opening day collection. We'll be able to do uh, museum quality, uh, educational children manipulatives, which is oh. long uh, hand yes. for those kinds of things you see um, where children are practicing writing or, or um, putting A, B, C's in order, those kinds of things are really fundamental to okay. early literacy development. And there's some really beautiful things out there that really aren't in a, a standard government building budget <laughs> that um, by working with local communities, we can really enhance the quality of the experience um, of all our users. It's going to be magnificent, but we really can't do it without that additional support. And comfortable furniture in the library, <laughs> which has not always been the yeah. case. But that's one of our focuses. We want people to be relaxed, enjoy coming there, spend time there. And really, our libraries are extensions of our homes and extensions of our schools. Mm -hmm. They are all in one. All right. So, so this library has been developed where there are not only quiet rooms that are closed off, but there's also little nooks within the library that have different abilities to house you know, a, a, a book talk or um, poetry slam, a poetry slam, or or then you reconfigure the chairs and it becomes a little mini sort of a cafe where 
several people of two can sit uh, and, and chat together or talk together. There's a little another little nook where it's a little quieter. And what I like about what these guys did, that the designers did, was they started the library being loud as you walk in. All the loud kinds of activities happen. And the further back you get into the library, the quieter the activities are. So they, it's been designed with all kinds of new concepts in mind. Yes. And I really, um, I think that people, some people still have that false impression that libraries, you have to be quiet, shh, the library and shushing people. That's not the way it is. And like you mentioned, as you walk in, you're going to feel the liveliness, the talking, that the things are happening in this building. It's not a book warehouse. No. no. And that's very important to understand as people start to believe that books become irrelevant. First of all, they're not. And second of all, that's, the, that's just the bare surface of library services now. Yeah. That's great. So anything else before we wrap up that you guys would like to talk about? That couldn't have possibly been a half an hour. Oh, well. We, <laughs> we still can, have we another can talk, We can talk about this for four it's hours. It's a topic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one thing we would do is we'd love to invite you back for the grand opening, and we'll give you a tour, oh. and we'll show you how we've achieved these goals. That would be really great. Yeah, It's going to be amazing. All right, we still have another minute. Well, there's a reason we're all smiling. We're all smiling, number one, because we're finally building a library for Capitola. Yes. And number two, we're being so successful and being welcomed warmly by the community in our fundraising efforts. And I, I think that um, I, I think that you've flashed our uh, website up a couple times while we've been talking. And I think that people who want to get involved or know what's happening can look at the, um, at the Friends website. Get on our email list. And get on the email yeah. list. And is our bookstore open the first weekend of every month? The first Saturday of first every, Saturday month. every month. And so then a handful of other Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. It was a gift of the, uh, or a donation of the Capitola yeah. Mall. We couldn't afford to and, be there otherwise. And people can donate books to us to sell yep. at our bookstore to help the library be built. That's right. And this and bookstore is making a lot of money. It's <laughs> amazing. It's amazing. It's a lot of money. It is. And it's people a, love I'm, it. I'm telling you, the, the books are a dollar paperback, $2 for hardback. Um, and, you know, people come in, and even a few who have said, oh, you know, who, who gets books anymore? I can think of one man <laughs> very recently who came in and said something like that. He wasn't grouchy, he was just a little, hmm. And he walked out with two books. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we need to wrap it up. I okay. want to thank you for joining me today, thank and you. I want to thank you for watching our program. And we hope you'll join us next time for Nonprofit Spotlight. Thanks. Thanks for having us. That's nice.